What's up friends of YouTube, Derek Van Deest here with Zandam Music. In today's episode, I'm going to show you guys how to route any machine hardware into Studio 1.4. For this video, I'm going to be using Machine Studio for the demonstration. So let's hop right in. So starting out, we want to open up the Browse folder, head over to the Instruments panel, scroll down to the Native Instruments category, and then uh, click on, on Machine 2 and drag it into the leftmost window. This is going to open a new instance of Machine 2. Here it is. I'm going to close the browse window. And as you can see on the hardware, it changed to orange, indicating that we are on Group A. Now for this video, I'm going to be routing eight groups, one for each uh, color. So I'm going to start by clicking this plus icon to add all eight groups to my workload here. Now, uh, you can see on the hardware how all the groups lit up, all the colors. And now we can start routing. So first thing I'm going to do is click on Group A, right click on it, head over to Group MIDI Batch Setup and change it to Sounds to MIDI Notes. Next thing I'm going to do is click on this circular icon here, uh, click on Output and then MIDI. From there, I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to shift click sound 16. So there's 16 sounds, one for each pad. Once I have them all selected, I'm going to change the destination to host. And that's it for, for the output section. Next, I'm going to go to input. I'm going to click on MIDI and I'm going to turn off through. Next, I'm going to click on group and I'm going to change the root note to C3, which is middle C on the keyboard. All right. And I'm also going to click on active. I'm also going to change channel to the first channel, channel one. All right, great. So we have that set up. Next thing I'm going to do is copy that uh, group and then start pasting it for all the other groups so that each group has the same settings. Okay, great, we're making progress. Next step would be to go back to group A and check the channel, see how we're on channel one. We want each group to have its own individual channel. So group B, we're gonna change to channel two, group C to channel three, and so forth for all the groups that you've chosen to create. So group seven and finally group eight. Great, we have that routed. So let's close that out and let's go back to this window up here. We're going to right click and we're going to remove track. Next, we're going to hit this plus icon and we're going to start adding some new tracks. So go ahead and name it anything you like, pads, machine, whatever uh, makes sense to you. Change it to an instrument, eight count, which is one for each group. Uh, for this, I'm going to turn off pack folder. Um, you can choose any color you'd like or auto color it, it doesn't matter. Um, the input we're going to leave at default and we're going to change output from existing instrument machine to channel one and we're going to have it ascend from there. So go ahead and hit OK. And as you can see here in the window, we have eight groups for machine. So go ahead and uh, shift click machine eight to highlight all of them. And let's go ahead and open it up a little bit, expand it a little more. And that way, now we can see the, the categories that we couldn't see before. We need to change the middle category here, which I, I have it right now. I have it set to my MIDI keyboard. I want to change that to Machine 2. And as you can see, it changed it to Machine 2 for all of them. But now I want to change all the channels to each individual channel uh, for each machine uh, group pad. So let's go ahead and do each one. And it's very easy to make a mistake, so take your time. And don't worry, you only have to do this one time. Because uh, you'll be able to save this preset for uh, further use. So now that we have all of those uh, set up, let's click on any of these uh, piano icons to open up machine, doesn't matter. And let's open up the mix section. From the mix section, we want to route each group to a mix channel. So instead of having this on master, you're going to want to have it on an, on an individual extension. So let's give one extension to each. 
So D would be 4, D would be 5, and so forth. And now we have 8 extensions. So let's close that out, and let's go to the mixer. So I'm going to open it up a little bit. And from here, click on Machine 2, and that's going to open up a drop-down window here. And you're going to want to open up 8 of them, one for each group. So now that we have all 8 opened up, we should be able to play them accordingly. And we're going to go ahead and test it here momentarily. So I believe everything should be set. Let's click on Machine. Let's go back to the main window, and let's click on Group A. We're going to go ahead and test it out now. So before we test it though, um, I'm going to show you guys how to save. And you can save at any point. Uh, this is how you do it. You go up here to store preset. And you're going to name it something. I named it machine. And I already have it saved, so I'm going to hit cancel. But you're going to hit OK. And that's going to save all the work that you've done so far. Now, I'm going to open up one of my drum kits here. And as you can see, the drum kit was opened up on group A. And I should be able to play it uh, on my MIDI if I click on the MIDI pads. But before I do that, I want to click on monitor. I want to be able to monitor the instrument. And that's going to remove some of the delay while playing live. So in order to monitor, I'm going to click on the first pad here. I'm going to click on the speaker icon. And that's going to allow me to play it live. So here's a test of it. Okay, so as you can see, it's playing live. Um, it's working pretty well. Now, I'm going to show you guys what it looks like on the mixer here. If I were to play again, you can see that group A is the only one that's playing. All right. Now, let's go ahead and test the next group, group B. Let's load a completely different drum kit. Let's do this one here, the second one. Let's go ahead and test it out. Sounds a lot different from group A because it is. So let's look at the mixer. Where is it coming out of? It's coming out of the second channel, which is just what we wanted. So that's that's how it's basically working for all eight of them. So by routing it in the way that I just showed you, you can put in any sound you want in any of these groups. For example, let's say we're using both of these drum kits, right, in the same song. And now we want to add an instrument to group C. So what I'm going to do is um, click on sound one. I'm going to go back to the hardware, shift, browse, and then I'm going to go to sound, and I can go ahead and select one of my instruments. So for example, I can open up, let's see here, expand. So let's say air music technology using the track wheel. I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to click on expand and it's going to load up here for us. So back in the window, I can double click expand. Um, I can choose any sound that I want. So let's say what a uh, soft lead, right? Anything. Now um, I should be able to play it on group C. So close that out. Let's go to group C, click on shift pad mode, and then pad mode one more time to enter the window in which I can play this as if it were a keyboard. Just like that, guys. And as you saw on the window, uh, hold up a second. Yeah, it's in the right one, the third, the third uh, channel. I can easily switch between the groups. Now we're playing the, the drum kit, and here we're playing the other drum kit. All right, and that's how you route machine. So f at this point, I'm gonna start showing you how to get more organized. Let's get a little more organized here. Let's close the mixed window, and let's go ahead and start renaming everything. So machine one, let's change it to group one, or group A actually, it's gonna be a little easier to remember. So group A, tab, group B, tab, group C, and so forth. You want to do it for each one. You don't necessarily have to name it like I do. I just found this to be the easiest way. Group E, group D, hold up, I, I messed up here. I lost concentration. Uh, group H is the last one, right? So D, E, F, double click. Let me just change this real quick. GH. Okay, cool. Next thing I do is I like to change the color and have it match the color on the hardware. So for group A, 
It's kind of like a, a dark orange color. So maybe something like this. Group B kind of looks like a yellow. Group C is like a lime green. Group D, like a turquoise. E is like a blue color. And I, I can't stress this out enough, guys. Um, it's, it's, it's very important to stay organized. The more organized you are, the easier of a time you're gonna have producing. So this is more of a dark purple color. G is more of a magenta. It's very easy to, ma to make a mistake here, but no worries. You can always fix your mistakes. And there we go, we have one, we have all the colors set up properly. Next thing I'm gonna do is click group A, shift click group H to highlight them all. And I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna create a pack folder. And I just realized I made a huge mistake. I should have done this before coloring them because as you see here, it messes up the colors. So um, unfortunately I gotta do it one more time. I'm gonna rename this machine. So it's the machine folder. And I like to leave it white for machine because, uh, you know, it's just like a neutral color. So I'm going to go ahead and recolor every... Oh, wait a second. Something's not right here. That was weird. Okay, so I guess you have to do the transparent um, for this to work. The transparent option. So you can't really give it a color, apparently. You can't give the folder a color. So uh, I'm gonna do this one more time for, real quick, guys. Go ahead and uh, fast forward through this. And like I said, you only have to do this one time because once you have this done, you can save it as a preset and the work's already done for you for future projects. So as you can see here, I now have a pack folder with all of the colored, um, let me close this out real quick guys, all of the colored groups. Now to get even more organized, you're going to want to color the, the uh, mixer as well, the mix channels. So we want to rename each one again. So group A, tab, group B, tab, group C, you know, um, this is the part that takes a while, renaming everything. Group E, group F, G, and then group H. All right, we got them. So next we're gonna color them by just clicking on that and, and <coughs> coloring them the same colors. Oh, hold up, this is the orange one actually. So sometimes it takes a little while to get the colors correct to uh, click on the colors. My computer's like lagging a little bit. Um, group B was yellow. I really wish uh, Studio One made it a little easier to uh, change the colors. Uh, group C would be like a lime green. Group D is like a turquoise blue. And this is all just organization. I think I used this one, I can't remember. I keep clicking the wrong buttons, but it happens. Uh, purple, group, C, group G is like a magenta color. And then group H is a red color. Great, so we got everything organized and ready to go. So one other thing, you can add MIDI files as well. You can, you know, double click and here you can start putting in keys. It works just like you would uh, if you were pushing the pads, but you don't have to push the pads. You can use your MIDI keyboard. So that's basically it, guys. That's how you route a uh, machine to Studio One 4. You guys learned something today. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to email me or comment below. Um, thank you all for watching. Uh, this was a requested video, so hopefully I answered your question and uh, I'll see you guys in the next